your first blush to the U.S.-China trade deal when it comes to energy? Sure. Well, it's a 4x increase in their energy buying from the U.S., so it's a big number. It's going to be all across a lot of commodities, a lot of energy commodities. We think the biggest winner is probably LNG because that's been slow to, to develop in China with the U.S., and a lot of the U.S. liquefaction capacity is coming online, which is going to be good for those new facilities to sell to China. So typically what we'd say is, oh, they're going to buy more commodities. We have to then make more of those commodities. Is that the case when it comes to, say, oil and gas? <laughs> the good news is we were already building liquefaction mm -hmm. capacity. And so it was going to go to Asia no matter what. Now we know where it's going to go, most likely China. Uh, we also are talking a lot now that the year has started about uh, what companies in the U.S. are doing in terms of their CapEx. Now sure. there's going to be this demand pull from China, but we're already hitting record productions here in the U.S. Are right. companies going to be spending more if demand really picks up? Not necessarily. Spending actually for 2020 is going to be down about 6% in the U.S. There's only five companies that are spending up. That's Exxon, Chevron, Pioneer, uh, Diamondback, and Shell. So the rest of the industry is spending down, and we think that 6% actually could migrate down to down 10%. So the rig counts will be down, spending down, lots of overcapacity in the market. It's going to be a tough year for oil services in North America. Uh, in, in the U.S., uh, staying with that for a second, sure. so that's sort of drilling, but what about completions? Like we have a lot of drill but uncompleted wells. Sure. Like are we going to see activity there, or is it already past us? So there will be some activity in, mm -hmm. in the duck count, uh, but the duck count's already come down significantly, and so I don't see a big surge in duck activity that's going to hold up utilization for pressure pumpers, for example. So completion companies will be under pressure for most of this year. All right, that makes it sound like overseas is going to be the only bet for these oil services, Absolutely. guys. Uh, for me, the news was CNUC is going to be increasing their spending this year to like 20 percent. That's a, yeah. a, a national oil company um, uh, in China. D d who benefits? Who wins? So clearly the large gap diversified. So Schlumberger, that's their backyard. Uh, certainly did Baker Hughes, 70 percent international, and Halliburton has an underappreciated international exposure. So international spending based on our work is going to be up probably mid-single digits, so 5 percent overall, and that's basically every market around the world. But offshore hmm. spending, where CNUC spends, is going to be up probably 12 or 13 percent, so even better for the offshore markets. And that, what would that like Gulf of Mexico and sort of off of Brazil and Guyana, for It's going to be, exactly. It'll be mostly the Golden Triangle, so Gulf of Mexico, West Africa, and then Latin America. And we see spending there up probably in the 14, 15 percent, a little bit more than Southeast Asia. But that spending should migrate towards the offshore drillers, so Valeris, Transocean, mm. and then companies like uh, Technip FMC, Ocean International, which recently upgraded, key players in the offshore markets. I, I'm just so struck by talking to you in the massive reversal of the conversation sure. in like six to eight months. I mean, I feel like just th that long ago, offshore drillers did not stand a hope and a prayer of like getting right. any kind of stabilization and how quickly that turned. Well, what's your interpretation of that? It's the capital austerity being forced on the EMPs in North America. We've had enough of this outspending of cash flow. Companies are demanding returns, and we're finding out the geology is not supportive of that. So while production will grow in the U.S. this year, we think the IEA and the IEA have forecasts that are way too high. We think they could be as high as 50 percent too high. So we see 50 production. 50 percent too high. Yes, yeah, so they're looking wow. for over a million barrels of mm -hmm. growth. We think you get half a million of black oil, maybe 200,000 a day. or sorry, half, half a thousand, 500,000, mm -hmm. 200,000 a day of liquids. So call it. 700 all in. So we think that number is going to migrate lower. It's going to disappoint to the downside for a lot of these producers in the U.S. And they have, we have to spend somewhere. So we're going to spend international, we're going to spend uh, abroad. For the uh, international oil services, uh, do they have more levers to pull in terms of cost cutting or are they actually going to find pricing power? So they're actually going to find pricing power at this point. So cost cutting is done. We had five years of a downturn. It's been tough. So we've taken mm -hmm. everything out. We're down to the bone at this point. So just seeing the volumes go through these facilities that are underutilized is going to show big incremental margins for big cat diversifieds.